U.S. President Donald Trump is lashing out at reports that he is under criminal investigation now for possible obstruction of justice. The Washington Post first quoted unnamed officials on Wednesday who said special counsel Robert Mueller was expanding his investigation to involve Mr. Trump personally. And the president is once again calling the probe a witch hunt. Earlier, he tweeted, they made up a phony collusion with the Russian story, found zero proof. So now they go for obstruction of justice on the phony story. Nice. Joining me now, Seth Abramson, an attorney and professor at the University of New Hampshire. And also joining us again, Trump supporter and CNN political commenter, John Phillips. All right, let's start with you, Seth. Seth, you has received a lot of attention for some tweets, a hundred, if you will, tweets that you posted tearing apart a document that is purportedly Republican talking points to counter reporting that investigators are looking into whether Donald Trump obstructed justice in the Russia collusion probe. Uh, the first talking point there that we read is there is no case for obstruction of justice. This point has been made by legal scholars from both sides of the aisle over and over Again, Seth, what's your opinion on that first talking point? Well, that's very much a minority view that we've heard from just a couple of attorneys, particularly Alan Dershowitz and Jonathan Turley. In fact, the majority view when you talk to trial attorneys, not appellate attorneys, is that a prima facie case, a case on its face, has been made for obstruction of justice on the basis of ex-director Comey's contemporaneous memos, the context in which Mr. Trump said the words to Mr. Comey, I hope you'll drop the Flynn matter, as well as the fact that he fired him later and the comments he made to the Russians in the Oval Office about trying to ease pressure on himself over the Russia probe. So we do have a prima facie case at this point on obstruction. John, I'm curious what you make of uh, th that statement. Well, it's not just Alan Dershowitz and Jonathan Turley, it's also Nancy Pelosi. It was reported not long ago that there was a meeting of the Democratic caucus, and you have, of course, uh, certain members of the caucus, including Maxine Waters and Brad Sherman, who have been out calling for the impeachment of the president over obstruction of justice and collusion, and all of these things, and Nancy Pelosi told them to cut it out. If Nancy Pelosi thought that this was, there was any truth to it, or this was a uh, prudent place for the Democrats to go, she wouldn't be telling her members to knock it off. She'd be moving forward full steam ahead. And John, that may have been a response to that the, the investigation is not over yet. It is still ongoing. I want to uh, point out another one of the Republican talking points, uh, which said after months of an investigation, there is no evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. Seth, I want to bring in some of your tweets now because you tweeted back to that saying Trump asked Putin to hack. Putin asked Trump to drop sanctions. Trump agreed. Putin hacked. That's, quote, evidence of collusion right there. Now, Seth, we certainly haven't heard that from investigators. Uh, how did you make that determination on your own? Well, let's make a few points here. Number one, The Hill reported just a few hours ago that the FBI investigation into collusion is in its, quote, unquote, early stages. So we wouldn't expect any collusion, uh, con uh, conclusion, excuse me, on the collusion question at this point. The Washington Post reported today that the FBI investigators are starting to look into the possibility that financial crimes were the basis for collusion. Now, the comments that I made in my tweets had to do with this question of when did the Trump campaign find out that Russia was engaged in cyber war on the United States? We know that Mr. Trump knew uh, as early as uh, July of 2016 because he said during a press conference that he knew that Russia had the ability to release emails, and weeks later, he allowed uh, his chief foreign policy correspondent, Jeff Sessions, to talk about sanctions and dropping sanctions with Sergei Kisilak. We know that from Jeff Sessions, and that suggests something the FBI should be looking into seriously. John, I mean, those are pretty strong words um, from Seth there <laughs> that he believes there's evidence of collusion right there that he just described. Yeah, well, Seth can say it's collusion, but that's Seth's opinion. That's not something that's been proven yet by any investigation. I can stand in my garage and say that I'm a Volvo. That doesn't mean I am one. If you go back to James Comey's testimony that he just gave in front of Congress, there was a lot of information that was almost exculpatory to the collusion argument. In fact, it was so much so that, that Chris Matthews went on TV after uh, Comey's testimony and said, well, you know, I think the whole collusion thing fell apart today. Seth, another one of your tweets reads that we also know the top national security official in the nation, Trump's right-hand man, lied about receiving huge payments from Russia. Is it not enough, though, that Trump fired National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, uh, who you're, I, I'm assuming, uh, referring to here? 
Well, let me make uh, one point first, and that is when you want a legal question answered, you ask a lawyer, you don't ask a politician. So quoting Nancy Pelosi or quoting Chris Matthews, uh, frankly, Nancy Pelosi said that Mr. Trump would self-impeach, meaning that he would, through obstruction of justice, be impeached. So I'm not sure she would agree with John, but I think you have to look at attorneys. And what attorneys are saying on the Michael Flynn case is that we have a prima facie case for making false statements to the FBI. Yet another prima facie criminal case involved in this probe. So the second talking point from the RNC that we have no evidence of any crimes being committed whatsoever is really laughable on its face to attorneys, uh, whatever politicians might be saying. John, your reaction to that? Yeah, Michael Flynn lied about taking money from Russia Television, which is the same operation that pays Larry King and they pay Ed Schultz. He lied to the vice president. He was fired over it. I don't see what the scandal is. I don't see where where the Trump administration went wrong. If you have an employee that's not being fully honest with you, you've got some problems. And if you ignore those problems, okay, that's that's an understandable issue. But they responded to it by by forcing the guy to leave his post. And I think that was appropriate. I, I'm curious, Seth, are you at all concerned uh, about um, your messaging here and the way that you, you, you went through each of these? And I know you did 100 tweets. You look at every single uh, talking point from the Republican Party. Are you concerned that people who you may be trying to reach will look at what you did and say, he's obviously a Democrat. He doesn't really, you know, he's just trying to malign the president. Well, as an attorney, I try to be thorough and I try to be factual. So, for instance, what John was just referring to with respect to Michael Flynn, in fact, the making false statements claim is not about his payments from the Russians, though he didn't disclose those. It's actually about lying to the FBI as to whether he discussed uh, sanctions with the Russian ambassador. And in fact, the Trump administration did not fire him on the basis of making false statements to the FBI, which we would have thought that they might. In fact, Mr. Trump was very clear that he only fired Mr. Flynn for lying to the vice president. And that's very, very concerning when you know that someone has made false statements to the FBI, but you say that that's not a basis for dismissal, even though it is a basis for a felony conviction. John, you got to respond to that one. Well, look, I think this is a situation where you have people who are very upset over the results of the election working their way back. They've decided that Donald Trump is going to get impeached and, uh, and, and they are moving back from that point. And so if it goes to collusion, they'll go to collusion. If it's obstruction, they'll go to obstruction. If both of those turn into uh, dead ends, they'll go someplace else. And I just think it's a big waste of time. I think the American people want Washington, D.C. want politicians to move forward on issues like jobs and the economy and trade, those sorts of things. Immigration. I think, though, you know, if you look at, at some of the polls and you look at some of what people are talking about, they are concerned about this because uh, their political leaders are concerned about this as well. Um, I thank you two gentlemen for coming on the show um, and talking us through it all.